all of fire, and I have no doubt in my mind that she ate breakfast because she's always got tons of energy. Or drank coffee, one or the other. Well, we're going to think... Highly caffeinated almost at all. <laughs> <laughs> she, look, she looks too healthy to just be one of those that guzzles a caffeine. Really? Welcome to the Atlanta Business Radio Show. Who's right, Bernadette? <laughs> All the above. <laughs> <laughs> Bernadette Bose, welcome. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Lee. It's a pleasure to be back. Yes. So last time you were here, this book was just like a glimmer in your eye. Oh, boy. Yeah. It's been a um, very, very active, active year. Um, the book, Shedding the Corporate Bitch, mm-hmm. is... Um, been a story that's been a love rumbling. Story, right? <laughs> a love exactly. story between me and the inner critic of me. <laughs> and um, yes, and yeah, the last time we talked, we, it was probably just kind of evolved out of my heart and soul when I all of a sudden had this somewhat of a emotional breakdown leaving corporate and realizing that I was so happy when I left and I couldn't figure out why. Why was I so thrilled about leaving a you know high-powered job a high power travel position, salary, so forth and so on. And I, it finally came to me that it was because I had so much angst and attitude and this ego and sense of superiority around being, you know, kind of this highfalutin corporate executive and all of a sudden shedded kind of all of that and realized that it was so much easier not to be such a nasty person. And, I had chosen years ago to be that nasty person because I thought that's what a woman needed to do. Mm-hmm. And so the book, uh, I've been writing it. It took me about 10 months to write it. That's your copy, by the way. Oh, thank you. You have been such a great supporter. I needed to uh, make sure I got you a copy of it. And it's pretty much the first round off the off the press. It's so fresh. It is yeah, fresh. <laughs> it is fresh. Oh, it sure got in the inside. And look at this cool bookmark. Everything you do, all your marketing and all your stuff that I see, whether I'm following you on Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn, it all looks so good. Thank you. And, and that is compliments. Um, it was obviously my concepts based on the fact that the characters are kind of my before and after. <laughs> okay. Uh, however, Havana, Havana Nugent is the one who has designed all of that. So um, she, ha- I have to give her credit because she was. You don't have to. Well, I will. <laughs> I'll give her credit for, for kind of interpreting my, my transformation, so to speak. So, what are some of the key messages in this book? First of all, shutting the corporate bitch. It reads itself to think that it would be just a woman that would read it, but that's not the case, right? Absolutely not. Which has been kind of surprising to me as well. Mm-hmm. I pretty much get a even if it's not. You know, 50-50, it's like 55-45 or 60-40 because um, the key messages are that, that no one should live with a lot of angst or attitude, fear, insecurity, intimidation because that only gets in the way mm-hmm. of them being fearlessness, fearless enough to pursue their goals and their dreams. Mm-hmm. So the message is shed all of that, which is what bitches are. Bitches isn't a person or a, a trait of a person. What that word means within the title is it is the angst and attitudes and fears and insecurities and intimidations people are holding within them that is preventing them from being able to move forward and pursue their goals and dreams. So the key message is shed it and you know, you'll find the confidence, the self-esteem, the value of yourself to really go after what it is you want in life. And how did you personally go about facing these fears? I mean, that's that's kind of a scary realization. It was definitely a scary realization to, to, to admit to myself that I was such a nasty person for so long. <laughs> but I but it happened it happened over time, both developing that personality and yet and then shedding it because um, I realized I was literally walking around with this scowl on my face. And there's one chapter in the book that I had to add after I even wrote it called My Facelift. Because after I left and I'd run into people from my old old life, they would sit there and literally like look at me while I'm talking to them and they'll be like, Did you get some work done? <laughs> and I'd be like and I knew what they were talking about. And right. they're like, Because you look completely different and I'm like, That's because I don't have a you know, a bitch written all over <laughs> my face. Right. And so my realization came by one, thinking I was having heart attacks or, or panic attacks because right. I was so built up with all this like junk that as my inner child, I think, 
you know, I wasn't like this my whole life. I mean, I was a very sweet, you know, you go read back your high school yearbook, you know, yeah. and you read all the sweet things people say about you. And it was so opposite of what I'd come over, you know, my tw in my 20s and 30s. So I just literally had this um, shedding. I mean, it, all I can describe it in, in the book is, it was as if in that scene, um, scene from Wizard of Oz, when the bad witch mm -hmm. has the water thrown on her yes. and she starts melting. Yes. That's how I felt. Like when I walked out of that corporate building the day they let me mm -hmm. go, I kind of walked in the parking lot, looked back and said, I am never doing that again. Wow. And it was as, as if this whole kind of mask and, and you know, uh, uh, bitch just let go of me. <laughs> That's all I can say. Sorry if anyone's offended, <laughs> but that's all I can say. How, how do you think? Very good. How do you think the initial transformation? You said in high school you were this cheery, happy-go-lucky right. girl, right. right? The girl next door. Right. So, um, what do you think made you transform this first time into this corporate bitch? Well, it was an intentional move, believe it or not. Don't you kind of think that in order to perform or to fit in in certain business situations as a woman, it's kind of expected? You have to be a little harder. It's it's right. Is that what you well, thought? No. What? If, uh, I wish it was that. Well, <laughs> I, I wish I could get off the hook that easily. You had a mentor that said, <laughs> that you hate or you're fired." Somewhat. Really? really? Well, what happened was I'm one of twelve kids. Wow. And I bring that up because, you know, we grew up in a very modest middle class, you know, environment and home. And then I, w I went down to school in Boca Raton, Florida, mm -hmm. at Florida Atlantic University. So if you know that environment, if you know Boca, mm -hmm. it's, you know, very wealthy, you know, the kids are very spoiled. And I went to school with some great people, but they all, you know, they all had money. And here I am, this middle class, middle child of 12, and I wanted their lifestyle. And mm -hmm. I started getting greedy. I started getting, you know, kind of um, wanting that superiority that they had. And I found, but yet at the same time, I was watching that their money got them things. Mm -hmm. And their, their money also allowed them to be somewhat nasty. So it started in, th in that environment. And I'm not blaming them. Believe me, this is all about my taking responsibility. That's what right. the book is about. Um, for the fact that then I used that influence plus then going into corporate at a very young age in my early 20s And yes, the women and the men that I saw as success how I defined success, which mm -hmm. was power greed position were very aggressive very somewhat nasty people mm -hmm. and I thought well if that's what I want and they're successful then that equals my need you know and my desire to be successful so that equals bitch. So that's the path that you should take that, in order right. to achieve that. So right. there was no person, there was no outlier of, oh, look at that lady, so nice and helpful and friendly. Cruella de Vil. <laughs> you didn't see, no, I'm saying there was no data point of somebody that was not a bitch, you know, that you could have said, you know, go to the light, burn it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go to the dark side, go to this side. <laughs> well, it's not to say that I didn't have good influences in my life. But at the same time, kind of on parallel of me adopting this new persona, mm -hmm. I was becoming very successful, for, you know, right. at, at a very young age, and success again in my terms. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I was like, well, it's working, yeah, so why not keep it. not why not keep going? Do more of it. Right? Yes, and then eventually it became part of me as opposed to it being a persona at first. Right. It then kind of dug in deep and mm -hmm. stayed there for a long time. So what are you doing now since the book? I mean, how are you going about, are you so speaking? Sounds like therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've always been a journal, uh, journaler, mm -hmm. and I so I have hundreds and hundreds of journals filled out since I was young, and I always mm -hmm. said that they, it, journaling, mm -hmm. for anyone out there that needs help but you don't have money for a therapist, <laughs> journaling is the best therapy, mm -hmm. because you just dump everything that's going on right. in your head and in your heart and soul, right. and you just put it on paper, and it's amazing once you see it in black and white. Do you go back and read? No, I usually don't, although when I started writing the book, I realized that I needed to because it was interesting. I couldn't tap into that bitch anymore. Mm. And so I all of a sudden was struggling with the writing because literally three years ago when I had that shell t shedding or that melting, mm -hmm. I literally went from this nasty person to this unbelievably happy, content, at peace, 
it was very, very dramatic for me and has been ever since. Mm -hmm. So going back and tapping into that, I didn't even want to. Mm -hmm. And then my, you know, my editor was kept on saying, you, but you have to, you have to. Right. So, um, I, so since the book, what, what was really interesting is this book has turned into a whole new business. Uh, I started sharing my story immediately after realizing that I had a story mm -hmm. and that I had something to say because I'm determined not to have, especially women, but also men, I'm determined and dedicated to helping them shed all whatever's holding them